No Retreat, the Russian Front is one of the best games I've ever played, and we're going to look at a classic example here on Legendary Tactics. The year is 1941. Germany has made the fateful decision to invade the Soviet Union and decide the course of the war. No Retreat, the Russian Front recreates this theater, the battles that took place over those years, and even though it doesn't feel scripted, you end up making a lot of similar decisions that your historical counterparts did simply because they were the best decisions at the time. This is a game from a few years ago that I played against someone named Scipio, uh, who I connected with on Board Game Geek, and uh, we played this game over Vassal. I bought the game myself uh, about a year or so after it came out, and this was really only my second full game um, that I played against someone. I'm the Russians in this case, and the Germans are uh, played by Scipio. If Scipio ever watches this, I'd love to have a rematch. This was a great game. Anyway, uh, I won't go into all the ins and outs of how to play. Uh, just very basically, um, the Germans uh, win by taking uh, places like Leningrad, Moscow, and the and Sevastopol, and Stalingrad, and the oil fields. You can see that they're got a, a darkened hex around them. That's their their goals to reach those. Um, they get a victory point for every city they take. They get a victory point for surrounding my pieces and to get it, putting them out of supply. And uh, when they die out of supply, um, that's a victory point. There's a few other places, uh, events and so forth, you can get victory points from. Um, other than that, it's more or less a basic uh, hex encounter game in a classic sense. You know, if you look at my southwest piece here, um, you know, it's a it's a strength five with a movement of three. Um, there's a movement uh, table um, just over here where you can um, see that for armor this is how many movement points it takes to move a space. For others this is how much it takes to move. There's a, a shift for armor attacking uh, in the open uh, or along a river hex side. Uh, defense gets uh, defensive shifts on the combat results table for being in uh, helpful terrain and um, they basically you advance after um, after you win or you you know you're forced to retreat or what have you um, what I love about this game is the very low counter density you can see as a as the Russian player you know you start out with eight pieces <laughs> so it's very you don't really need to take a lot of time to uh, you know, scroll around and move stacks of units. Um, I mean, even the German army, most of it is there. Um, they do get some reinforcements, but a good chunk of the army is there. So it's very low counter, counter den density, um, which uh, means that every piece is important and where you place every piece is important. Um, the, the combat is decided by odds. You can see there's a breakdown here. Uh, you know, CB means, means counter blow, and I'll explore that once we get going. Uh, X is exchange, where each side takes a step loss. DR is defender retreat. DS is defender shattered, which means they have to leave the board, but they can come back for free. Uh, next turn, defender destroyed means they're destroyed, and you actually have to pay um, resources, which is measured in cards uh, in this game, uh, to bring them back. And so I won't go too much more into the game. Hopefully you've had a chance to play it, um, and you know a little bit about how it works. Um, basically, the the Russians are on their heels. Uh, they're not prepared for this attack. Uh, as you can see, the Germans have amassed a massive army, uh, which happened historically. The Russians didn't have much to defend, uh, and uh, that becomes the theme of the first part of the game. Uh, initially, the, the Germans' goal, if you uh, look over here on the victory points uh, track uh, here, you'll see the T3 with the little skull and crossbones. That means that it's a sudden death victory if the German player gets to uh, gets past that line. Basically, um, then it's a sudden death victory, and you, game ends very quickly after just three rounds. So, um, as a Russian player, my goal is to stave that off and to hang on. And uh, there's there'll be other sudden death uh, opportunities for Germany in the first half of the game, and then uh, midway through the momentum begins to shift, and the Russians begin to push back as they get more. Uh, reinforcements. Um, so anyway, in the for those of you who have played, you'll know that uh, the first turn of this is kind of scripted, into in that you know the the pieces are 
limited as to who they can attack in the first turn. So that's what you'll see my opponent do. He's going to move around and, and basically he he has to attack uh, with certain pieces. The, the initial um, turn basically or the initial attacks have to uh, happen as they historically did. After that it's a free-for-all. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to uh, advance things along so you can see the panzers uh, advancing and the infantry they're going to uh, cut off uh, my unit down here so this unit west here uh, what, in this game they have the classic uh, zones of control if you remember the old uh, hex encounter games so every piece extends their influence for for one hex and a, a piece cannot uh, stay in supply uh, and, unless they've got a, a, a route where the supplies can move without being disrupted by the, the zones of control. So you can see right now West has a, a, a line of supply that basically just goes down through the forest and out to Smolensk or whatever. Um, however, that will be soon cut off as these panzers shift around. And there, now you can see that the Panzers have effectively cut off uh, West. This is actually a, a, a move that is, you know, recommended even in the rule book. Um, they say it's a great way to, uh, you know, cut off. Um, it's a great opening to the game because it cuts off West. And if West dies out of supply, then that's a victory point for Germany. And everyone else um, basically, um, you know, moves down uh, that way to you know to into their positions um, then the, we have these blitz markers they are uh, tokens that can be spent to shift the uh, the odds on the combat results table one column to the uh, to the right so if it's normally a three on one it would be a four on one with these counters so in the case of the uh, there's other modifiers like if you're attacking across a river that's a shift to the uh, left, so that blitz marker will effectively cancel that out. Okay, so uh, the 11 on 3, um, which is uh, the first this attack in the north here, is a f plus the blitz marker is uh, 4 on 1, rolls a 5, which is a defender shattered. So my, uh, my guy up in the north there, sorry, um, he has to retreat and then he is removed to the shattered units box just below the turn uh, or the victory point track there. Okay, and he will advance after combat. The Panzers can advance three in good weather, the other pieces can advance two. So you can see uh, the city uh, of Riga and the city of Minsk are both very much under uh, in danger at the moment of being uh, taken. This attack, I forgot to put down those markers. Uh, this attack uh, on west. Now, the, what's interesting is my opponent actually decided to attack west instead of just sitting there and letting west uh, die out of supply, which normally is a f kind of a free victory point. But I think, in the interests of uh, time, he wanted to, you know, kill west and move on, so to speak. Um, they do a, a tw uh, the odds are a 21 on four, which is a five on one. Uh, and with the shifting and everything, um, so it, it, it's a he rolls a, a thing to retreat, uh, but a, the number he rolled is to retreat. But uh, because the unit is surrounded by zones of control, he can't, and so he ends up destroyed. So he goes in the destroyed units box, and everyone advances after combat. The Panzers move into Minsk, and then the next battle ends up being an exchange, which means that uh, both sides lose a step. Now in the early going, the Russians only have one step loss available on their units, so it goes into the destroyed box. This is the battle, sorry, in the south, and my opponent lost his Romanian unit. I guess they considered them expendable. They do not die. They come back in four turns after being destroyed, so that unit will be back in a few turns. And then the last battle in the middle, it's a three on one. Uh, I rolled, rolled a five, which shattered me. I have to retreat and then I can go to the shattered box. So I have to demonstrate that I can actually uh, retreat safely so I'm not destroyed and then 
I can bring those guys back for free. So this is, and then they advance, get very close to Kiev. And you can see the situation here is pretty dire. The, um, the advance has really um, <laughs> wiped out a lot of my army and he's pushed deep into Russian territory. And this is only the first turn. So uh, this is a tough game in the early going for the Russians. You can see why. So what can I do? I've only got four units left at the moment, but uh, I've got some reinforcements coming. Uh, the, um, the first thing to do is to draw cards. I'm going to draw the cards. I'm not going to show the cards except as they're played, uh, just to keep things simple. I'm checking the supply. Everyone's good. And now the organization phase. Uh, so I'm going to pay two cards to bring back those two units in the destroyed units box. I get the shattered units uh, back for free. And uh, they get to be placed in cities, so I'm just going to put them all in the frontline cities just to try and hold uh, the line a little bit. Uh, they have those yellow markers uh, on them. Those are disorganized markers. It means they can't attack. They can defend and move, but they can't attack, which is fine. I'm not looking to go on the offensive at the moment. And just trying to slow the Germans down uh, as best I can. So I'm going to move up the, the Bryansk uh, unit here just to shore up that line, tr try and put as much between uh, those German panzers and Moscow as possible. And then the Moscow unit, I'm going to the reserve unit here, I'm going to put into the rail movement box. And that basically is at the end of the turn, I can deploy units from there. It's a great way to shore up the line and just kind of make sure that uh, we're, if, if I've had something horrible happen that I can you know, put up some uh, last minute defense. And I'm going to, you know, move up uh, that unit there just to, again, I don't want to get encircled. One of the worst things that can happen is to have units out of supply fighting for their lives. And if they die out of supply, it's a victory point for each one of those units uh, for the Germans. So I really don't want that to happen. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to do any attacks. I can't do any attacks. And this is where he drops a few cards on me. All right, so the first card, if you look at the top part, is play at the end of the Soviet movement phase in clear weather only. Um, we're in clear weather. And so um, move all the supplied panzers not in enemy zones of control up to two movement points each. So this is where he's really going to maneuver. Um, and he also uh, plays in the counter blow step to place two counter blow markers on the map. So you're going to see how this is going to play out here. So he moves his panzers two movement points right into my uh, zone of control for the Bryansk unit. And that unit is going to uh, move to cut off uh, Odessa. And then he's going to put counter blows on the pieces. Now the counter blows are basically mandated attacks. If you you can discard cards to cause them or play an event to cause them, basically means that the unit that is next to uh, the units with a counter blow has to attack. And this puts me in a really tough position where I'm attacking against very bad odds. Um, this one here is 13 combat points versus my three. And this guy, I've got three and he has seven. So very low odds attacks. So I'm going to do what I can here to keep this game <laughs> game going. Uh, looks like uh, the Russians are really on their heels. So we're going to do the first one. So the first one is a one on t uh, three, sorry, one on three odds. I roll a five, which has no effect, which is actually probably one of the better results. Uh, the Black Sea can be used as a supply line for um, people on the coast here, just as the Baltic Sea can be used in the north uh, here to create a supply line. So Odessa is safe for the moment, um, but it was a good try. What he was hoping for was for me to roll you know, a lower roll, which gives him the opportunity to uh, do a, a CA or counterattack. And the counterattack means that he would get an attack at two to one and potentially force me to retreat, which mean because I'm surrounded basically would be the end of me. 
So it was a very good move. Luckily, I managed to stave off defeat there. Let's see how things fare in the in the center. It's a one on three. Roll a five again, no effect. So really dodged a bullet there, uh, certainly, because if uh, with a counterattack, he can obviously advance after that movement, and it can be a real it can be a real domino in the in a a row of dominoes that can cause things to go downhill very quickly. So uh, at the end of my turn, just getting rid of the disorganized um, markers. So those units are ready to go for next turn if they uh, survive that long. And I'll drop my uh, reserve right there. I just want to, again, make sure that I'm blocking units from being surrounded. I want to make sure that they are always, they always have a path back to my side of the board, which is this, you know, red side to, to a supplied city that has access to that. And I'm hoping that he can't loop around. He's, you know, the, the idea is that these zones of control can stop units from, you know, moving through them. So you kind of create a bit of a barrier. You know, if you imagine a, you know, a, a circle right around this unit here, and it, it basically means that, you know, and if he doesn't want to fight me, he has to go all the way around, which is um, what I'm hoping for. So hopefully that will be a good enough defense. And we move on to uh, turn two. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.